Hello and welcome to NLC TV News, reaching you live from the city of Lakoja, Kogi State. I am Mona Balagobo. First, the headlines. World Teachers Day, federal government assures improved welfare package by 2020. The Arjuna Army launches enduring peace outreach. Kogi Transport Mega Terminal opens. An African Movie Academic Award, AMA, reveals activities for 17th edition. And now the news in details. The Vice President Yemi Osibanja says there is need for an intergenerational handshake where the young, old and people of all genders work together in Nigerian politics. Osibanja said it in his speech at the official presentation and launch of the book Politics That Works in Abuja. The book was co-authored by Senator Baba Femi Ujudu, Special Advisor to the President of Political Matters, and Alex James, a young writer and political enthusiast. He said participants in the political scene will be able to testify about wonderful things that could happen. Osibanja said that the basis of liberal democracy was that everybody was invited to the table. According to him, the important thing is to ensure that there is, as possible, a level playing field. He said that over the years he had worked with young people who had creditably acquitted themselves. Osibanja said the young aides were not cowed by the age and experience of older ones around them. Earlier in his opening remarks, Ujudu said the event was to bring together old and aspiring politicians to discuss the future of politics in Nigeria. According to him, Nigeria is ripe for transitioning as it is craving for more youthful and innovative governance. Adam Sushomale, a former governor of Edo State, former national chairman of the All Progressive Congress APC, who featured as a panelist at the book presentation, said that politics and governance were not about age. He said that what determined the government was the character of those therein. The event attracted former governors, members of the National Assembly, members of the Federal Executive Council, members of the Diplomatic Corps, young politicians amongst others. Kogi State Governor Yaya Bello has affirmed that youths no longer have any excuse not to take the lead in the 2023 election, adding that the ballot should witness more young Nigerians vying for elective positions. He said they have been legally empowered by the Not Too Young to Run Act signed into law by President Muhammad Buhari in 2018, which affirmed the whole essence of their constitutional and allied statutory freedoms. Governor Bello made this known on Monday at a three-day retreat of young Nigerian parliamentarians in Lagos themed Youth Alliance Preparatory to the 2023 general elections, where he was represented by his special advisor on Youths and Students Affairs. Governor Bello noted that the Electoral Act Amendment Bill 2021 was now in conference stage and decisions over the conduct of party primaries and electronic transmission of poll results must be concluded swiftly and honestly with full regards for the applicable facts and realities of our modern age. Governor Bello hailed the organizers for fronting such a bold and worthy theme which perfectly befits young individuals like them who have accomplished the near impossible in Nigeria contesting and winning elections into high public offices at a relatively young age. He, however, challenged the parliamentarians to deploy their considerable resources and influence towards crafting Nigeria fits our dream as the debates of the next Nigerian media continue to take on and off the media space. The Minister of State for Education, Chukwe Mecca Nwajuba, has confirmed that teachers will begin to enjoy elongated years of service from 35 to 40. The minister said this during a symposium organized by the ministry in Abuja. The symposium was part of activities to mark the forthcoming 2021 World Teachers Day with the theme, Teachers at the Heart of Education Recovery. According to him, work was being concluded on the enhanced salary structure. He further disclosed that work was also being concluded on other incentives promised by the President during the 2020 World Teachers' Day. The incentives ranged from allowances, housing, training, to elongated years of service from 35 to 40. He said the President has approved the enhanced salary structure and will finish it very soon. The President specifically approved that it should take effect from 2022. Mwajiba further stated that President Buhari has taken the lead by approving a far-reaching and revitalizing program for the teaching profession in Nigeria, 
with many soft incentives. The minister urged actors, including state governors, the National Assembly, and others to key into the initiative to ensure its seamless implementation. He said they are tired of hearing how long teachers have been owed salaries in states. The minister commended Nigerian teachers for the sacrifice in spite of the many challenges faced in the course of their duties. He urged them to return themselves to fit into the new normal occasioned by the COVID-19 pandemic by being more technology savvy. Every year on the 5th of October, the world celebrates World Teachers Day to highlight the responsibilities, rights and value of teachers. More than 100 nations, including India, the United States, Canada, Australia, the Philippines, mark the day with zeal. The day honors teachers all over the world for their important role in their country's economic development by providing education that enhances people's quality of life. Nigeria is not accepted as teachers join the rest of the world to celebrate. In Kogi State, our reporter, Faith Abdul Gafa, who interviewed some teachers, has more. Kogi State Teachers has joined teachers all over the world to celebrate World Teachers Day, a day marked every 5th of October by teachers to deliberate on issues affecting the naval profession. The teacher spoke about the significance of the day as a day for teachers to come together to celebrate and discuss on important issues and prefer solutions. We are seen in the I mean, community as those that are nothing to, I mean, to contribute. To the community why because they don't have money and you know money is life and uh, in this society today if you don't have money you are not considered as anything so that is why we are seeing teachers to not uh, be somebody in the society very unfortunate that some of the caliber of leaders we are having they don't have the political zeal the political motivation to recognize the effort of teachers. And in that, on that ground, if there is no political zeal, no political recognition to the opening of those end teachers, you will find out that other people will not even agree and look at that profession as one of the good professions. Like in China, I think the highest paid person is a teacher. In China, the highest paid person is a teacher. In China, whomever you will see have any better thing, it should be a teacher. But in Nigeria, it has reached a state that even a, a landlord don't want to even give a teacher his own house to rent because you will start thinking that they will not even pay him his salary. If you go to Botswana, teachers are the best pay worker in Botswana. Where we in Nigeria, we are nothing to write. Our own salary is nothing to write home about. So, and that is why you see that some teachers, we that we are old already in the job, we are doing our work. But some new teachers, now they look at it, what are they paying them? That they will now put all their life on the job. And that's why you see the standard of education is falling. It's falling. There is no motivation. No motivation at all. We are supposed to be motivated. And our remuneration is supposed to be very high. I love the job before, but it's very. I'm go, getting closer to the, my retirement, and then uh, I've not done anything tangible. So all this is not making me to be. They urge the government to look into the issues of salary, payments, arrears, and general welfare of teachers. That has been a challenge facing the teaching profession over the years. They said this will be a measure of bringing the profession back to his rightful position in the society. Teaching profession is a noble profession. And um, celebrating the day means a lot to us. But the way it is now, things are falling apart. Teachers are no more treated the way they're supposed to be treated. Teachers are not recognized. And we are the ones that produce so many people, like lawyers, doctors, and all these things. But the government, they are not doing their part. Imagine in some states, we heard that they are almost up to six months without payment of salary. Uh, well, that is one good thing we try to commend our, our governor, His Excellency Alajia Adoiza Bello, for at least 
prompt payment of the salary. And uh, we are still uh, appealing to him, please, you should look at our other side of it, like our Libanos, our uh, promotion implementation, and other annual increment, so that we can still, you can still see more of his teachers in action. Some of the teachers applauded President Muhammad Buari for the increment of teachers' salaries and enlonging services years from 35 to 40 years and 65 years retirement age. I want to congratulate uh, Mr. President Muhammad Buhari for the recent initiative he came up with, that of uh, 45 years you know, in service and 65 years of uh, age of retirement that he has considered for teachers. We welcome it and we are calling on him to persuade the state governors to also consider that in their states. They describe this as an act of good gestures that will better the lives of teachers and encourage more people to join the profession. Faith Abdul Ghaffar reporting for MSC TV. In sub-Saharan Africa, on World Teachers' Day, the government has projected the need for additional 15 million primary and secondary teachers by 2030 for the education system to recover from the COVID pandemic in the region. UN agency chiefs said teachers were driving force behind global education recovery from COVID-19. According to them, for the education system to recover from the COVID pandemic, it requires more investment in the well-being, training, professional development, and working conditions of the world's 71 million educators. Today, we celebrate the exceptional dedication and courage of all teachers. UNESCO head Audrey Azale, UN Children's Fund, UNICEF Chief Henrietta for top international labor organization, ILO official, Guy Ryder and Education International's leader, David Edwards, in a joint statement said, they celebrate their capacity to adapt to and innovate on the very challenging and uncertain conditions. World Teachers Day, celebrated annually on October 5th, provides an important opportunity to call on governments and the international com community to spotlight teachers and their challenges and share effective and promising policy responses. They are the principal actors of the global education recovery efforts and are key in accelerating progress towards inclusive and equitable quality education for every learner in every circumstance, the statement continued. From using technology creatively to providing social-emotional support to their students and reaching those most at risk of falling behind, teachers have been at the heart of the educational response to the COVID-19 crisis. Now is the time to recognize the exceptional role teachers play and to empower them with the training, professional development support, and working conditions they need to deploy their talent. They said education recovery will be successful if it is conducted hand in hand with teachers, giving them voice and space to participate in decision making. As of September 27, schools have fully reopened in 124 countries, partially in 44 others, and remain fully closed in 16. These figures highlight both need for attention to teachers' health and well-being as schools reopen and for continued professional development to integrate and deploy successful education technology. According to UNESCO's research, 71% of countries have given some priority to vaccinating teachers, but only 19, including them in the first round of inoculations, while 59 other nations have not prioritized them in their rollout plans. More effort is needed to support teachers where and when remote and hybrid teaching is still necessary. Putting teachers at the heart of the education recovery, these years' focus will require increasing the size of the workforce. The world body said 69 million more teachers are needed worldwide to ensure universal primary and secondary education. The Oyo State Government said it has commenced the conversion exercise for 1,572 offices across ministries, departments and agencies in the state. The exercise, which is expected to last for some weeks at the Civil Service Commission Headquarters, Secretariat in Ibadan, commenced on the 30th of September 2021. In a statement signed by the Chairman, Civil Service Commission, Kamau Abiodun Aderibibe, 
the exercise is consequent upon the approval of the executive governor of the state, engineer Sheyi Makinde. Adewigbe said in order to identify the best hands, a winning test will be administered to the candidates. He therefore called on the participants to demonstrate sufficient eagerness to make a difference in their service to the state. The statement enjoined affected officers to visit the commission on dates allotted to them, while it assured them that the exercise would be in line with the state government's quality assurance principle. As usual, the conversion will be in line with the template of merit and competence introduced by Governor Shea McIndey, FNSC, as well as available vacancies declared by the MDAs that will accommodate the officers. The Director General of the Abuja Chamber of Commerce and Industry, ACCI, Victoria Akai, has described the Dangote Group as the flagship and epic center for Africa's industrialization. Speaking on the sideline of the Abuja International Trade Fair that was declared open on the 4th of October, the DG said the conglomerate has placed Nigeria on the continental and global map. This is coming as the Dangote Pavilion at the trade fair became a mecca of sorts as participants who visited the stand make inquiries about the innovative products that were being displayed. She noted that the group is indeed a major player for the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. Dangote is the major sponsor of the 16th Abuja International Trade Fair. Meanwhile, President of the Abuja Chamber of Commerce and Industry, ACCI, Dr. Mojtaba Abubakar has said that for Nigeria to develop its economy exponentially, it will need more industrialists like Aliko Dangote. According to Mojtaba, both the Abuja Chamber of Commerce and the Dangote Group share a common interest in the development of commerce and the industrialization of Nigerian companies on the Dangote Group that are participating in the trade fair, which includes Dangote Sugar Refinery, Dangote Cement Nascan, Salt and Seasoning, and Dangote Fertilizer, amongst others. A statement from the Dangote Group's Chief Branding and Communication Officer, Anthony, said the trade fair offers Nigerians the opportunity to patronize the newly introduced Dangote Fertilizer and other innovative products of the company. Representative of Dangote Group at the opening ceremony, Hashem Ahmed, said the company will continue to support the government in the areas of industrialization, job creation and social intervention. The Nigerian Army Record Command Headquarters Lokoja has launched its three months enduring peace to reach out to host communities. The commander, Major General William Ali, who announced the commitment during the official flag off with free medical health care, said the officials will intensify efforts at fighting crimes in the society. He thanked the Nigerian Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahya, who said the exercise, Enduring Peace, was a joint exercise involving all security agencies in Kogi State. Children, old and young, men and women, form beneficiaries of the Enduring Peace Outreach, which was launched at the Army Records Ekota Chari Megumeri Barracks, Lokoja. The Commander Major General Williams Ali said it is the decision of the Chief of Army to appreciate the host communities. He thanked Governor Yaya Bello for creating the atmosphere for the security agents to operate. The exercise will involve a series of operational activities, including patrols, ambushes, and raids of criminal hideouts. And we must not forget the host community to make us achieve our objective as soon as possible. So the host community will look forward to your cooperation to get us good intelligence information so that we can do the needful. I wish to place it on record that the resources for this medical outreach and the entire exercise enduring peace was provided by our Mabu Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahya, Nigeria Me Medal. We are highly grateful, sir. And our gratitude also goes to the Kogi State Government for providing the enabling environment for us to operate as always. The Kogi State Governor Yaya Bello, represented by the State Security Advisor Jerry Omodara, commended them for the good gesture. He promised the fight against crimes and perpetrators continued. He is particularly happy with our recent activities in all parts of the state, particularly in areas identified that the bandit criminalities are taking root in Kogi State. He congratulates all for winning the war 
from the Sussex recorded recently in most part of the state. The governor is particularly happy with Nigeria Army. We are entering the Ember month and it is expected criminal activities will always increase just as you are strategizing criminal elements they are also strategizing. You must work together, synergize together to ensure that this state is kept away from all criminal activities. The official in charge of the medical center, Captain Nuruddin Saka, gave the essence of launching the free medical outreach. The children are also not left out as children below the age of five shall be given them um, prophylactic anti-malaria drugs and deworms and also have booster dose of uh, polio vaccine. Beneficiaries appreciated the health care extended to them. This is the first time this community is having such beneficial from the army record. So we all appreciate it. It's an unexpected gift for all of us. We pray for them to may God guide them and do more for us. Other heads of security operatives who were present also spoke. Ensure that the Ember Mot is free for all citizens of Kogi State and even travelers and those who are passing by to ensure that we don't, they don't have any, any security problem. There's a synergy, sharing information to them. So whatever movement that we see that is suspicious, we are going to pass it to them and the DSS so that they will do the needful. It is the first medical outreach organized in recent times by the Nigerian Army Records headquarters, Lokoja. The outreach will take care of persons with malaria, hypertension, diabetes, eye problems and other illnesses. Mosquito nets and drugs are part of items distributed to the patients. It will last till 23rd December 2021. Matthias Ayodiji Peter reporting for MLC TV. We will a short break right now and when we come back we've got more stories for you. Please to stay with us. Malachi TV Online is here for your timely and reliable news that reaches you fast with the breaking news. Choose MLC TV. Get human interest stories right here on MLC TV with entertainment, sports, business, culture, tourism, and fashion news stories all featured on MLC TV. Not forgetting political and current affairs news, state and federal government and people's matters will be discussed regularly on MLC TV. Reaching everywhere, informing everyone. Glad to have you back. The Hunter Group of Nigeria alongside the Kogi State Vigilante Service raided a kidnapper's den along erotic mountain where three other suspected kidnappers were arrested and three Fulanins were rescued. Information received revealed that the rescued on the raged Fulanis were kidnapped from Chikara community along Lokoja Abuja Road some 13 days ago by the busted kidnap syndicate which operated within that axis. The spokesperson of the Hunter Group, Abdullahi Yahaya, said that the rescued boys were not hurt and were in perfect condition while the arrested kidnappers were handed over to the appropriate authorities alongside confiscated weapons for further investigation. Abdullahi Yahaya commended the state government and the Commissioner for Solid Minerals, Engineer Bashir Gegu, for their support in providing logistics for their operations in the area. Reacting to the development, Kogi State Security Advisor Jerry Omodara noted that such security success by the operatives was a welcome development. The synergy security agencies have displayed in the last uh, uh, month is of great importance for the people of Kogi to appreciate security agencies. The government is appreciating them. The government will continue to assist them as far as logistics is concerned to do their job. Arrested so many kidnappers, we've arrested bandits, we've arrested uh, criminal elements that even try to uh, house breaking, bus snatchings in Lokoja metropolis. We've been able to take care uh, in the recent days and will continue to push forward. And a proof that the security network of Kogi State was strong and solid enough to crush all forms of criminal vices. 
He opined that the local vigilantes across the state have continued to record good results because of the morale boost and support the government has continued to give, as well as the cooperation from the citizens and synergy between the security operatives. He reiterated that government at all levels will continue to make efforts towards sustaining the drive for a peaceful Kogi state by making every nook and cranny of the state unsafe for criminal elements and their sponsors. In a similar situation, the Hunters Group led by the North Central Commandant, Godwin Issa has arrested some criminals terrorizing the Zango Daji area of a Davi local government area. Godwin promised to smoke them out of their hiding places. The Federal Road Safety Corps says night travel is unsafe for motorists and commuters, especially now that most roads are in a deplorable state and insecurity in the increase. The FISC Sector Commander in Kogi, Solomon Agure, made the assertions. We are going to redeploy more men this time around and the vehicle on the road to make sure that we, we monitor the road and make sure that everybody is safe. We have called it uh, zero operation, zero, zero accident this year and uh, we believe we should have zero accident. Roads are, are, are better. The faster people reach their destination, the safer for them too. According to him, drivers should guard against violating the stated infractions and other anti-safety vices. Agure said that the cops will be on the lookout to enforce strict compliance to safety laws and orders on the highways. Kogi State Government has ordered the immediate movement of all sides' motor parks to the mega terminal with immediate effect. The government who gave the charge during a press briefing in Lokoja said it will no longer tolerate any park operating outside the mega terminal, which is located in Philili, axis of Lokoja Kogi State. And it becomes a criminal offense beginning from the 4th of October for any E3 along the road to use such a restaurant for picking or disembarking passengers. And the fine is 200,000 Naira within 24 hours for using such place. And subsequently, if such fine is not met within 24 hours, the corporate has to pay an additional 10% every other day. Following this, His Excellency has directed the establishment of a mobile court to prosecute offenders. The state security advisor, when asked why it took the government so long to mandate the use of the terminal, spoke. And we are happy that the local Jamaica terminal that is speaking well in terms of security for us is back, is alive, and a lot of activities are going on. Nobody, no transporter is allowed to carry passenger in Lokoja or to even drop on the highway. You will be arrested. The tax force is in place and they are working day in, day out. You will recall that the mega terminal was launched since first quarter of this year for the smooth operation of transporters and commuters to avoid accidents, crimes and traffic congestion on the roads. And to Ali Nasu on Sports Today and then Matthias Ayodeji on Entertainment. Good evening, you are welcome to Sports Update. The newly elected president of Nigerian Volleyball Federation, Musa Nimrod, said the Federation will soon start park volleyball in communities across the nation. Nimrod stated this at an interstate volleyball game organized by Information System Audit and Control Association, ISACA, at Old Parade Ground, Abuja. He said the Federation will start the park everywhere to enable people easy access to the court and to play the game. He said getting sand for beach volleyball is a problem. Hence, the decision to start park volleyball. In football, 21 players have arrived at Eco Hotel, camp of the Super Eagles, ahead of the 2022 FIFA World Cup qualifying doubleheader against Central African Republic. 
The Super Eagles will host Central African Republic in Lagos at the Teslim Balogun Stadium. Three days later, they will travel to Douala in Cameroon to take on the same opponent. As of Tuesday, 21 members of the players are already in camp. Two players are still being expected. The team will have their first training session this evening, Tuesday, at the Teslim Balogun Stadium, Lagos. Founder of the African Movie Academy Award, Peace I Am Osigwe, has outlined the planned activities ahead of the 17th edition of the award ceremony. I am at a media party, introduced members of the AMA team and her plans to make a total of 100 projects in 18 months. She said that from September 2021, the African Film Academy will kick off with the project set for the year and the next. Osigwe also noted that she will be coordinating the activities of her team members to achieve the desired goal. Oyin Katalabi, who is the project manager in her speech, disclosed that the 2021 edition is set to hold on November 28, 2021, while the nomination list will be revealed on October 21, 2021. And that is our package for today. For your sponsorship and advert placement, call the numbers displayed on your screen, and please do like and subscribe to our social media handles. Our Facebook page is MLC TV, Instagram MLC TV 2021, and our YouTube channel is Malachite TV. I am Mono Balagogo. Thanks for watching.